my name is Sam Wild and I'm a visual artist working on the first collection with Zofany and Pladio. So a little unusually, I come from quite a different route uh, that took me to becoming an artist today. I uh, did my BSc in Natural Sciences at Durham University. Uh, for those that don't know, Natural Sciences is, is the degree David Attenborough did, so it's very focused on conservation and biodiversity. So shortly after graduating, I immediately began working as a trader in London's financial district. And about two months into that job, I realised I'd made a mistake and this wasn't the route for me. So I used to love drawing as a child, but it's something I gave up around the age of 14 to focus on science and mathematics and, and that academic career route. Um, and I began teaching myself by looking online at other creators and then later sharing my work. So whether it was for 10 minutes at lunchtime or on the tube ride home, I was always scrambling to draw and to create. And then as that grew, my, my love and my passion for, for illustration really took a hold. I then put forward a portfolio to do a master at the Royal College of Art. Um, so at the time I didn't have any formal art qualifications and by some miracle they let me in. And then during this time, I began to develop my own unique approach to pattern creation. Uh, as I wasn't formally taught, I taught myself how, how to make these, these worlds. So my philosophy uh, around world building surface design uh, centres around the concept that each repeat is its own self-contained biome or ecosystem and that those ecosystems can be infinitely expanded out to create an endless repeating world. And then with these repeating worlds I really wanted to showcase the knowledge that I learnt during my BSc and educate uh, around issues around conservation as well as the very real magic and wonderment of the natural world that exists today. So the case of precarious pangolins, a percentage of proceeds on everything sold will go to buy uh, reserve land for the pangolins, in particular the World Land Trust, which uh, directly buys agricultural urban land and uh, restores or converts it to the natural habitat um, for the pangolin. So with this work and all my work, not only do I want people to be inspired by the stories and to highlight the plights of these animals, but also I want people to feel proud and assured of the fact they've supported a wallpaper where a percentage of proceeds go back to protect the very thing that's inspired by. Um, I think that's just a really wonderful story to, to share if this is in your home and something to be proud of. So during my time at the RCA, my main MA project was to create the world's first truly living wallpaper. And by that I mean uh, an animation that's seamlessly in repeat. So we look at the background here, we can see the still image version of precarious pangolins. However, what we've created is the world's first living version. So what that means is as you follow one pangolin, for example, this one that will start on the strawberry, it makes its way up and across this world, and then seamlessly repeats and goes back to the strawberry next strawberry long and so forth and so forth and this is happens with every pangolin every snake every element is continually moving and what this creates is an endless seamless living wallpaper um, that can infinitely repeat and infinitely connect without any seams and then in conjunction to that what's so exciting to me about showcasing the world's first living animation is uh, what this could mean for the future of surface design. I hope this could maybe set a precedent or be something pioneering in the space. As we think to the future, the blur between analog and digital is ever changing. We're constantly looking at our phones or moving billboard images or in VR or augmented reality worlds. And we created this um, animation at such a high quality that 50, 60 years from now, who knows, uh, living animations could be the norm when it comes to your pattern work in your home or in your body. Um, and um, precarious pangolins could be the first of its kind. So the reason why I wanted to create the world's first living wallpaper was to be at the precipice or pioneer this new era. Uh, and I think that's very true to the Palladio spirit. Uh, the brand originally came about in the mid 20th century and, and created its own era post World War II. And that's what I'm hoping to do with this first collection is create a new era in surface design where I'm looking towards um, the digital medium and bringing movement into what has always been traditionally static repeat pattern work um, and it's an honour to be the first first artist to uh, debut collection with Palladio. I'm also so excited to think of the artists that will come after me and, and just as I've decided to focus on living animation and living repeat pattern work, uh, what areas they'll usher in and, and, and what they'll continue and to be given the freedom uh, to further explore the ideas they might have 
uh, initially developed during their MA work or BA work or in their creative practice or studio, uh, I think that's what's going to be so exciting about the Pladio brand moving into the future.